So, ladies and gents, yes, it's true. This is not clickbait. We aren't talking about nipples. We're talking about Wrangler Star, the true Wrangler Star, not the cool YouTube channel. Cody's a rock star, but no, this is a Wrangler Star. And milk and mm -hmm. winter fencing and our horse uh -uh, is going to knock uh -uh. the tripod. Don't do it. Our horse is knocking Together. the tripod. Hey, we should probably get started because... Whiskey. I guess we'll have to hold it like a selfie stick. Oh, I'm Brad. <laughs> and I'm Krista. This is uh, the Big Family Homestead, and yep. we are doing uh, Country Life News. Country Life News. So what are we talking about first? We're, we're talking about, I don't know, actually. Stop it. The horse. <laughs> the horse is... <laughs> Quit it. We're talking I... about cows. Yes, we're talking about cows. Hey, baby. Hi. Ooh, chickens. Look at them. Not the dumpster. That's, well, it's not a good place, but whatever. Um, how's it going? Good. So, the calves. Yep. We're trying to switch to hand feeding, which is working great. Yeah, so far, it's been good. But those ladies are not happy are about not it. They're not happy about it. They're not happy about it. I can't say that I blame them, but, you know, trying to save their teats from getting ripped up because... As calves get older, they're gonna get their it. tongues get more abr uh, abrasive, and they actually uh, cut their t their teats. Well, and we actually have milk cows for a reason. We have milk cows for a reason because we want to be able to make yogurt and cheese. Hi, and guys. Butter. Hello. And feed our daughter Grace. Uh, yeah. So we already fed them this morning. We don't know. We don't know if they're gonna want three feedings, but we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna give it a try, and hopefully they'll eat. Don't eat, but what do you think you're doing, man? Now, would you look at that? He just took right to it. This one over here is actually eating straight out of a bucket. Now, an explanation because we honestly didn't know this was a thing because we've not always been into dairy cows, but Great. you can. Do what's called bottle feeding, mm -hmm. and that's a bottle, right? Just like a baby, right? And the reason that his head it needs to be at this angle is so that it goes straight into his uh, fourth stomach and bypasses the rumen altogether. That's in, that's yeah. intentional, and it's yep. the way that he was created so that yep. he doesn't get what indigestion. I don't remember what it is, but it's, it's better for their diet. It's better for the, that. He's gonna push that door. Open. I get him. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you, dude. But that's how they're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it. And, and that's when they're little. When they get older, then they uh, can go out of a bucket. They can drink out of a bucket. That's great. Just let him be. He's yeah. good. And then over here, oh we've got Wellington. Wellington. He Wellington. has. Uh, He's already eaten. Uh oh, he wants the nipple. He doesn't want the. Uh... Come on, that's not yours. Come on. <laughs> Come on, it's over here. It's yours. You got your bucket, pal. Yours. This is yours, buddy. Yeah. He was drinking out of it he a second ate ago. A good bit earlier this morning, so you might not want all of it. I think he sees the nipple and wants that. Well, I'm not doing bottles for both of them. That's ridiculous. Well. You're messy. So. They're getting big. They're doing good. And you know what? Pretty soon, though, we're going to actually... We can't go too terribly long since these are intended for steerage. These are... We do not want bulls, so we're going to definitely have to uh, castrate. And with these guys, it will not be snip-snip. It'll be banded. We will band them because um, it's easier on... Everybody. Everybody, yeah. Buddy's watching. He's, don't you snip me, pal. No. Don't you do it. So nipple versus bucket versus bottle versus... Wait, what? On natural, you go with the straight up bovine. What are you talking about? The, the calves. They're not nipples. The No. They're teats. If they're on a bottle, they're a nipple. We're not talking about the bottle. Yeah, I am. We are. We're talking about cow. The what we just showed the calf I, stuff. Right, I know, but you have nipple, bucket, or bottle. So it's either really, honestly, bucket or bottle. 
<laughs> or the au naturel keeping the calf with the mama. So <laughs> that's tea. Ladies and gents, <laughs> what is your preferred method <laughs> to milk <laughs> so that your calves can, you know, have sustenance? Uh, sustenance. The liquid, <laughs> the white gold. Yeah, no kidding. The there... pre milkshake, the pre shake. <laughs> There's a huge benefit to all of those things. Um, you mean milk? No, to having the the ma, the calf with the mama, bucket feeding or bottle feeding. So with bottle feeding, you can uh, definitely uh, train the calf um, to be. We went serious. A little bit okay, more kind. Yes, we went more serious, got honey, because, yeah. You Let's were... talk about our options, shall we? Our options. Um, if you go on natural and you keep the calf with the mom, there's a couple of downsides to that. You get less milk eventually. You Actually, the calf can tear up the teats of the mama. We don't need any teat tearing around here. No, no, no. no. That's, that's no bueno. No bueno. Nope. No. So Hurts then like a beast. Bucket feeding... Honestly, it's so easy because you just put the bucket in front of them, they drink it down, and you're done. Bottle feeding, you have to hold the bottle, but still, it's you know, it's just whatever works for you guys. There's so many different ways that you could do a thing that it just has to work for you guys. So, so but just going to to circle back around, back to the funny part of the art of the the clip. No. Okay. Good. That the calves need to have that milk, um, yes. and so if you're if you're a city dweller, if you live where people are, and you don't live out in the uh, in the in the nether regions of the country, like we do, then you may not know that. Yeah, when for most farming, what happens if you have cows and calves and there's babies, right? Most of the time, the farmers will. Pull the calf away from the mom very quickly. Immediately. And that's why you have that feeding mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we leave our calves with the mama for several days, even up to two weeks. Yeah. And a lot of farmers don't do that because there's there's stuff that happens with the mom. The mom doesn't want to leave the baby. The baby doesn't want to leave the mom. There's problems that can happen. Right. There are problems that could happen. Um, the calf... Um, We'll, the, we'll the, stay attached. Right. The calf will stay attached and then will not want to bottle feed at all. They won't want to do that. So that's why farmers do that, so that they get the most milk out of that cow. Um, so what they do is they milk out the colostrum into a separate bucket, and um, and then they... Well, they feed the they calf. They tube feed it to the calf. A some, lot of farmers. Some, some farmers will tube feed it. Some will bottle feed it. It just depends on the farmer. And tube feeding means what? Because well, most people don't know. A tube feeding is basically they're take, sticking a tube down to the calf's stomach it's and rough. and pouring it down into their stomach. But the reason I find for that, that a little rough. It is rough, but yeah. the reason for that is so that they get those nutrients that they mm -hmm. need right away. Yes. Now we're not throwing stones at any farmers. No at all because we've got plenty of dairy farmer mm -hmm. friends and we understand they have to do things differently than we do right. um when you're or dealing else, with hundreds what, of cows or else guess what you don't you don't get milk right exactly you you want to have milk in your cereal you want to bake things well mm -hmm. if you don't want it to be $30 a gallon and there's certain things that they have to do exactly i personally won't do that no. but they got to get the colostrum into those babies or else mm -hmm. they're not going to be as healthy right and the other part to this is what we're saying. There's three real basic methods of doing it, of getting the baby to eat right away. One's a bucket, one's a nipple, one's a bottle. Right. Oh, right. I guess four because the tube thing. Right. So uh, the bottle is, if you're going to separate the calf from the mom, bottle is is what you're going to have to do first because then then after that, after they're strong enough, then you can bucket train them to drink out of a bucket. Um, it just, it, it's, it's a whole big process. It's, it's a big learning curve. We've learned so much these last few years with having calves and, and we've made mistakes where we've left the calves with them, you know, all day long and then separate them at night. And it's, you know, we get less milk, which sometimes is a good thing because 
right we now. We always have our, too much. We always have too much. Um, our fridge is full, so it's like. <laughs> well, and here's the other thing too. Like if you've if you've driven by or seen dairy farms and they've got those little mm-hmm. pods, those little white pods, little calf hutches. Yeah, that's that's what those are. They're mm-hmm. called calf hutches. Yeah, and so they've got a system where the mom gets the calf everything the calf needs, and then the mom keeps doing what the mom does. Now, here's another part to this that people don't understand because you might think, oh my gosh, that's so mean. It's terrible that they would pull that calf away from the mom. And while we personally think that that's not the best way to go, there is a good reason to make sure that the mom gets back into getting all the milk out of her Yeah, is called mastitis. Exactly. You don't want your cow to have mastitis. And if and if uh, they could die, actually, if well, it goes untreated, they got to get milk out. Yes, they have to get the milk out. And if you leave the calf, I was going to say this earlier and forgot. Um, if you leave the calf with the mom um, and then separate them to milk them, the mom won't let her milk down and can get mastitis that way as well because she's what she's doing is she's holding that milk back for her calf. So it's it's better. She than, has the ability to stop. Like yeah. think, think about it like this, gentlemen, ladies. You ever have to go pee really, really bad, and and you you start going, and then for whatever reason, something scares you or whatever, door slams, bam, and then it stops. Cows can do that on a dime. They can with milk. They can. You don't think that that's a possibility. They can. They can, uh, they can stop the flow. They. It's. It's so infuriating. They can shut it off right away. It's happened to us several times. So there's a lot of things that you can just shut off right away. Like this stream. Kind of. <laughs> I was gonna go. Where, okay. Well. Um, yeah, so milk, nipples, buckets, bottles. Ladies and gents, what do you think when you're milking your cows? Which way do you feel like the best method of delivery, the delivery method of the milk is? This is what happens when you do a video <laughs> where the horses are, especially a very curious one. He's a good boy. <laughs> Look out, dude. So winter, let me tell you what, guys, uh, if you've watched cartoons like uh, the, the kids cartoon Phineas and Ferb, there's an episode with Swinter, which oh. is summer, winter. Yep. Have you felt like it's been Swinter? Yes, totally. Totally Swinter here in central Wisconsin when normally we get feet of snow all year long uh, or all winter long and negative 25, 30, negative 35 degree temperatures for a good bit in January. Uh, but the temperatures are generally above uh, below zero. But this year, I think we got below zero maybe once or twice and that's not normal. And we got maybe three feet of snow all winter and that's not normal. Let's talk winter. How many of you guys feel like winter kind of never really happened? And then right at the very end, we had just a smidgen of a taste. But for the most part, we kind of missed out on winter. And you may be feeling like, whoa, yay. But then there's always repercussion. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we actually, winters up here can be really, really bad. This past winter did not feel like winter at all until what the beginning of this month and we got dumped on we had two feet of snow within a a week period it was insane until march i had not plowed our driveway except one time and i really didn't need to yeah no no and then you had to plow twice the beginning of this month once you crazy yeah well tell what uh tom j beckman has to say about this all right so this is an indiana prairie farmer who is saying if Grinch stole Christmas, who stole who stole Old Man Winter? Or the Grinch. Right, right. Who so someone him? certainly kidnapped him this past winter season. At least that's how the data appears when you look at summaries from the Midwest for climate climatological. Climatological? Climatical. Sure. Climatological. Cli- 
cold. Do you see yeah. that? Yeah, climatological. climatological. Okay, winter, which includes December, January, and February. Yes, there was a cold outbreak here and there, including a long week in the deep freeze across much of Midwest in January. Not here. Yet overall, we saw a very mild winter, especially in terms of snowfall. Uh, it says Beth Hall, director of Midwestern Regional Climate Center at Purdue. Hall says lower than average snowfall totals weren't a surprise. In fact, they were predicted by most long-term weather forecasters. And El Nino was in play, and El Nino waters in the Midwest were, are often warmer than average, which often means less snow than average. So we can blame the El Nino, the boy. Oh, yeah. The boy. No. <laughs> What no one can predict ahead of time, however, Hall notes, uh, is how intense a trend will be once it plays out. Will it be just a little below normal or a lot below normal? In this case, the prediction was right on target and the trend was skewed to skewed far to the low side. So these these are some data state data st uh, stats. Uh, temperature in Indiana was 35, to, um, which is uh, five degrees above normal in the second and warmest, second warmest winter ever. ever. And there's, there's loads of different um, here for Wisconsin. Uh, de departure from above normal was far greater in several other Midwest, Midwest states. Wisconsin was 9.7 degrees above so, normal. So a couple things. First thing I'm thinking is, how in the world do these farmers, and hats off to you. Mm -hmm. If I was wearing a hat, I'd be, mm -hmm. I, I would take it off and say hats off to you. Yeah. How do these farmers like predict these things like in the farmer's almanac books? How in the world do they do it? Is it just observation and then they write it down? I know that we've got friends who are farmers who are obsessed with rainfall. Oh my gosh, yeah. Obsessed. And I get it mm -hmm. because yeah. rainfall equals money. Money. Mm-hmm. Um, but the farmer's almanac is right far more often than it's wrong and way farther right than most meteorologists on TV. Oh my, yes. And by the way, just side note. Here, here, rant are, coming on. Yeah. Feel, feel the rant. Feel, feel the it, rant. feel it feel the, percolating. Feel the, mm -hmm, yeah. What other job could you be wrong and completely inaccurate like 50% of the time and still keep your good paying job? I know of one, but we won't go there. Politicians? Yes. <laughs> they just they just flip a coin. That's right. what you guys don't know. Right. Yeah. Meteorologists, man. All yeah. they they they're wrong so often yet people just love them. They're just pretty faces on the TV and Well, that's why they have all these scantily clad women now as weather well, weather people. Ryan Hall, y'all. I like him on on YouTube. I think he's pretty accurate on on what what he what he talks about on his on his channel is is pretty darn See, accurate. What you don't know is he's actually holding a farmer's almanac behind his back, and when he's not looking, because he bounces in his chair. Oh, you ever seen he, that? he bounces and he's spins in his chair, and that he drives me nuts. Add much? The only reason yeah. why I can say add much is because I can recognize it in myself. Yeah, he yeah. He's got. Yeah. All, he, you, I'll bet you. Yeah, so usually what I do is I just... We love his I, channel. I watch it. I listen to the information, but I can't watch him because he's not sitting still. It, it, he's a bouncy man. Yeah. Nice guy. He seems like a really nice guy. Hang out. H yeah, yeah, Have yeah. A corn dog with him. <laughs> but his information, I, I see his information being pretty accurate, at least for where we're at up here because clearly we're not anywhere else. I don't think he's a chicken nugget man. I think he's more of a corn dog man. Have a have a beer and a corn dog. You, you don't think so? No, I don't know. I don't. think he likes pizza. I don't, I don't know him that well. I don't know him at all. It just so. seems like a cool hang. Like you'd want to hang out. Yeah. So anyway, the winter that never so, was. So the winter that never was brings to mind though, because we've talked to several farmers up here. What is that going to cause? On what the other havoc side. is that going to cause okay. on the other side? Yeah, back to serious. This yeah. is true because we have talked to several mm -hmm. farmers. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I, I, it's the whole transition thing is, is weird for me. Yeah. No, because I think it's not going to hear me at all, but I know it It does. It fades in and out. Anyway, um, what's that going to cause with this lack of 
cold and the hard like freeze. hard freeze at least up here and the heavy snow is definitely going to cause more drought issues which we are already having severe drought drought problems anyway um but it's going to cause bug issues even well, though we're going to have cicadas it's a completely different bug issue we we hear that that yeah. they that farmers are saying it's always something yeah. that when you have a weird winter something goes weird they're they're like brace for impact we have no idea sometimes right. the hay production just dies mm -hmm. and sometimes um you'll get into a, a bug that'll decimate things or sometimes yeah. the deer will go nuts um but it's always something yeah. and <clears throat> And I think another part of this, and by the way, share your comments down below. I think that a lot of people say that when you live downstream, down river, you got to remember the water that's not going into the ground, the water that's not getting filtered and going back into aquifers, the water that's not going into the streams that is filtered and then ultimately ends up coming out of your tap, your yeah. water tap. Mm -hmm. If that's low, well, guess what? Everything is connected. Exactly. Exactly. So we got to definitely need to start thinking about that. Um, and that's funny because I had not thought of that. You know, I think about the grass not growing and, but I didn't think about that not going the water the ground, and the water deal. table is a big deal. So we're going to have to do our best to, you know, it, to conserve as much as we possibly can. But to find out if your area is in a drought or not is go to drought.gov. I had no idea. Yes. It's it's a great website. I I mean, yeah, it's a dot gov website, but I from the looks of it, it look it's and I've looked at it several times. It's very informative. On where what it goes down by county even, what um what your drought levels are. So you have no idea how bad I'm biting my lip right now. On the inside, there's so many jokes I want to make about the .gov site, fundraising, politic. No, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Let's get back to fun stuff. Yes. Because I'm going to have an aneurysm here, I think. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that. It's just. I'll just go ahead and... Where's the mouse? So I'm just going to... Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you folks who have noticed my shrinking body size. My mass, I've lost 48 pounds in the last 11 months. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with exercise, for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with um, reducing what I'm eating. But a big, big, big part of that is replacing the junk that I'm used to just grabbing and putting in my mouth, grabbing and putting in my mouth, replacing that with something that is healthier by a lot. And you know what? This is truth. When I have an option like our delicious, crispy, freeze-dried, thrive life food, I don't feel weird about snacking when I know it's just an apple yep. or it's just a nectarine. Or it's just cheese, like straight up cheese. Freeze dried cheese is delicious. And Krista has something to tell you about Thrive Life having the biggest, most awesome, bestie, best sale <laughs> of the year. There's only two really big ones. Two really, really big, big ones. ones. And this one is this, the first one is in April, and which is this month, huh? Don't miss it. No, don't miss it. They're going to have some amazing deals up to 50% off or more. Um, and this sale is coming up in about, ooh, 10 days, 11 days, 10 days for consultants, uh, 11 days for everyone else. So if you want to get so, in early. Get in early. Sign up now. Um Get your monthly delivery set up, which is free, by the way. You can get that delivery set up, and that way you can look at all of the different ingredients that they have and f just find your favorites and you can do even, that. You could even actually put stuff in like a, a wish list or a cart. Yep, you can put Just them so in. that you know what you want to get. Yep, you can go ahead and put those things in your cart and then, it, and then set your processing date 
for when this, the uh, sale is happening so you don't miss out on those deals. So for this huge sale, it starts on April 22nd for consultants, April 23rd through April 29th for everyone else. Don't miss out on these great deals. They have, the food is so delicious. I, I We literally use it every day. That's no joke. Yeah. Um, we used to cut onions a lot. I don't cut onions anymore. No, we cut onions. Because we got a yeah. number 10 can and you go, mm-hmm. scoop. Done. <laughs> done. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I get this weird thing. Let me ask you this. This is a, she's going to you, you're, you're shaking your head. No, I, I don't know what you're You know what I'm going to say. Gonna say. Mm-hmm. When I cut an onion, if I pick an onion up and, and I start it. to cut it, some weird like oil in the onion, I guess oil, I don't know. It like gets on my hands and it smells funny, yucky for days. It co- it like comes out of his pores. I almost wonder if it's not just from cutting it, but also from eating it. Maybe smelling it. I don't know. Because when I have like onion rings, not a problem. True. True. So, yeah. So, yeah this he doesn't is, this like is, cutting onions. This is the high quality entertainment you get here, talking about onions coming out of your pores. Let's get back to the important stuff, which is the sale, which is... The sale is April 22nd for consultants. And if you want to get into the sale early, sign up to be a consultant because then you don't miss out on the screaming deals. Or a delivery customer, which is free. Which is free to sign up as a monthly delivery customer. Um, And then that sale starts for everyone else on April 23rd through April 29th. And be mindful, the sales... The sale prices don't hit until 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Yeah. So don't have yeah. your order processed well, before then. And don't don't email us and go, hey, the prices are so high. Well, it hasn't. the sale hasn't happened yet. Sale hasn't you happened wait. yet. Yep, yep. But these things sell out fast. Mm-hmm. And if you go through our link, it helps our family out yep. a yes. lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. So, so thank please you. Please and thank you. In yes. advance. Mm-hmm. Back. Go on. Whiskey's trying to operate the tripod again. Should have brought a a, a, a flicker. A, a whip. He doesn't like They're this. They're called a whip, but I don't like. I don't touch them with it. It's just move it around and then they back off. So, so what is this thing that's going on? We're seeing it all over. H five N one. It's the uh, the avian influenza. So it's uh, affecting cows. We need to talk about. Oh, he's coming in. You want to come in the shot? Come, come over here, buddy. here, buddy. Come here, buddy. We need to talk about what's actual. And what's uh, fictional, and I honestly think the big deal here, ladies and gents, is n- not to get caught up in hype that's not true. Some of it is true. Some of it is, yes. But we need to separate fact from fiction. Yep. So, here we go. So, let's talk about what HPAI is. HPAI stands for Highly Pathogenic in, uh, avian influenza, and this is recur- this is occurring in dairy cattle across many many states, um, and it's it's causing alarm for a lot of folks. So we're gonna. This is a message from uh, the the Pennsylvania um, ag play, the, the ag leaders. They're just saying they want to have. Um, Dairy cows that are being brought in to Pennsylvania to be tested. They want them to be quarantined and then tested for the for the uh, H5N1 mm-hmm. within five days. Well, it says right here, too, mm-hmm. um, the uh, state has not yet recorded a positive right. test right here. Right. Uh, but wild bird migrations could lead to the future problems. So this is more like a concern right. that's coming. Right, right. Uh, and Chris Torres right there, this guy right here, American boom, arch- what, what a, he's a handsome dude. Um, why don't you skim the article? Because I have some thoughts on this and I am sure that a lot of you do too, because a lot of you have been in agriculture mm-hmm. and is this much to do about nothing or are there concerns founded in reality? Because toward the end of the article, we kind of find out something important about the virus mm-hmm. that... In the article, they're saying that the artist can be killed by pasteurization. The so, artist? The virus. Oh, not the article. <laughs> Hopefully the article cannot be killed by pasteurization. The, the, <laughs> the virus. virus. <laughs> I said it like three times, too. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. So, yeah, so, poor, poor, okay. poor Chris. He's going to get eradicated by a, an article. No. 
<laughs> Sorry. What did you? What did you get? So um, they're just saying uh, uh, the message from Pennsylvania ag leaders is simple. When it comes to highly pathogenic avian influenza and dairy cows, dairy cows, the cause there is no cause for panic. Um, the rapidly evolving situation, where's the mouse? There it is. Uh, if a situation involving HPAI and dairy cows has led to a lot of speculations and in some cases misinformation about what's happening and how it's affecting dairy. That's a big deal That's right there. That's a huge deal. To date, Pennsylvania has not had any positive HPAI cases in, on a dairy farm, although uh, cases have been confirmed in neighboring Ohio and Michigan. So you can see from this map here, all of the states in pink have had um, many, many cases of Discovery. HPAI. Yeah. So Alex Hamburg, Hamburg, Pennsylvania state vet, said that there was a call for a sick cow on a dairy farm in the state, but after testing, HPAI was ruled out. Um, he said that the state was working on a quarantine order that would require testing of any dairy cows coming from other states, applying to all dairy breeds and crosses. That'd be cross breeds, um, with the exception of <clears throat> exception being animals going direct to slaughter. But if you scroll down just a little bit, where mm -hmm. they said something about that, the virus is actually able to be destroyed by pasteurization. Like right you, here. Right there. Like USDA, Hamber Hamburg stressed that the milk and meat supply uh, are safe that and that pasteurization should kill the virus. Okay, now two things. Um, I don't like the word should. No. <laughs> Not there. No. There's plenty of places I love the word should, but when they say should kill the virus... Ooh, a little nervy there. Um, but here's the other part to this, and this, is, I think, is the bigger part. And I'm really curious to know your opinion because I think a lot of you guys are here because we don't go and scare folks mm -mm. with, oh, my gosh, the sky's falling, the sky's falling, you're going to have to run, you're going to have to buy these doodads, and if you don't hurry up and get this, this, and that, right. then you're all going to perish in flames and stuff. No. There's a lot of channels that are talking about these diseases and potential things. And you know what? When there really is cause for concern, we calmly try to convey cause for concern. Right. But they just said that pasteurization will take care of this, even right. if it's spread. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say it's the same thing as if it's in birds, but right. this is about dairy cattle. Dairy cattle, yeah. And there's a lot of people sounding an alarm saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, run for the hills when... There's no need. There's no need. Yes, I understand they, it says you, they should, it should kill the virus. I don't like should there. I don't like that word should because that means they don't know. Or they're unsure. Right, right. And here's another thing. Um, we've actually told this story before, so if you guys have a similar story, share it because people need to hear these mm -hmm. stories. When we lived in Florida, we lived, obviously, orange groves are everywhere. We lived yeah. near orange groves, but we were not close to nor mm -hmm. orange groves. But we had orange trees on our property, and one day we got a little uh, little tag on the door saying, hey, guess what? We're the government, and we're going to take your trees, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and we're going to give you $50. Because yeah. not because we had citrus canker on our trees, because we did not. Nope. There were not. And there was no citrus canker on anybody's trees around us. Nope. And we were five miles from the nearest orange grove, a commercial orange grove. So they said, uh, yep, by this date, we're going to come and cut all of your citrus trees down because there's a possibility of citrus canker spreading from your trees to the commercial growers' trees. Possibility. Possibility. Now let me let me let me see if I can unpack this for you guys. Yes, I understand that there are commercial orange groves around there. Yes, I understand they provide a valuable huge industry benefit. It's a huge industry. However, we did not have citrus canker. Mm -mm. It was tested. Mm -hmm. And this is called private property. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they, the government, said, no, we're going to come tear down or cut down your trees on your private property without your permission. Can I say private property again? Private property. Private property. Mm -hmm. Even though you have no issue, we don't care. 
Right. That's not called private property anymore, no. is it? Mm-mm. When another entity can come and say, we think that you might have a problem in the future, so we're going to go ahead and take preemptive you know, action and um, we don't care what you think. Yeah. That's not called private property. No, that's, that's another word that starts with a C and rhymes with un- untroll. So. Contr- something. <laughs> that's what this smells like to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what I see when I see these articles, I see not necessarily that they're going to do something right this second, I think they're laying it out that, hey, there's a concern here. We should all be paying attention. And then when there's a, air quote, threat Mm -hmm. that might be, they start culling animals because we don't want something bad to happen. Right. That's what it feels like to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's what it feels like to me, too. I mean, chickens, if chickens have the avian flu, the H5N1, they have to cull the chickens because it's it's... The hot, it's mortality. They're dead. The chickens are going to die. Oh, and they're going to cause so, a problem. So they're going to cull the chickens because otherwise it will spread to more chickens. But with dairy cows, the research I've done is they recover. They're fine. Going back to chickens, though. Yeah. They will go and cull neighboring farms yes. as well. Yep. Even if there's this kind of uh, problem at this farm. They'll go to another farm and they'll call yep. their birds too. Exactly. Just in case. Yep. Now, I am in no way saying that we shouldn't take care of business to ensure the food system is doing great mm-hmm. and that these things don't spread. Right. However, when it comes to our personal experience with like citrus trees and other people where they'll come in and preemptively take care of something like take care of something Mm -hmm. boy that just feels like we just don't want you to have it and we're going to ensure that nothing bad happens here so we can keep our producers without a ripple even though we have private property and they didn't have canker right they 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 probably had a deal with the, the government the and the, the big growers and the government to get rid of all of the local private groves, the local privately owned trees. Potential issues. Quote, potential issues so that um, they wouldn't lose money because, oh, they have their own garden. And so now we don't have their money, their income for them buying those things from us see i feel like these things are like a rollout oh yeah like let's let's go ahead and create an issue that's not really an issue Mm -hmm. like they said in the article it's not really an issue Mm -hmm. and then we're going to go ahead and preemptively make sure that this doesn't become an issue yeah yeah i don't know ladies and gents what do you think part of this reason for this video share your thoughts yeah type in the comment section don't forget a thumbs up And don't forget to share it with your friends. Yes, it truly helps our family out. It's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gents, we have a ram. And um, he's he's a sweet ram. He's a sweet ram. Buddy is his name. However, Buddy is starting to have to assert his dominance. Yes. And he was asserting some dominance on some little lambs, and we didn't want him to hurt them. And... We also have some calves that need to get out of the barn. Be outside. And so this is what we're doing. Yeah. It is. Oh, man. Look. It's supposed to be 54 today. Uh, and all of the buds are starting to come in on the trees. And it is it's gorgeous. So gorgeous today. Yeah. It's this fairly weekend, gorgeous out. This weekend is supposed to be 71 degrees on Sunday. I think I see an ATV ride in our future. Ooh. So this guy right here. Hi, buddy. He is the sweetest ram ever. Look at him. He's just a good boy. However, rams like to do a thing called ramming. They like to, they like to ram, but they also like to breed. Oh, I meant ramming. So, my, somebody's got, somebody's got something crazy on her mind. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, 
So the best, the best way for us to uh, manage, I don't want to say control, but manage the breeding is to separate him from the ewes um, when we don't want them to be breeding because we don't want lambs born in the middle of January again or in February. We got lucky. Which we did. We were very blessed. Um, so that's why we are building this. We're building this. Run here. He's, I hope. He's still right. next to the, the ewes, but he will not be able to breed them. So we've got post, corner. There's a corner over there. If you can see way over in the middle, we got to clean all that junk up. But uh, then a post here. And so that way they're going to have access to covered and hay. hay mm -hmm. And it'll be easy access for us to get water in here. And we already have that shelter made, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. Yep. But this is the fun part. And um, would you would you say that I usually do about 80% of the pounding? Yes, you do. I but don't do any of the pounding because I can't. It hurts. Yeah. I'm just hoping that the ground, which so far we've been very blessed, the ground's, the ground's soft enough. Soft. Yeah. It's not too bad, and I'm wearing shorts, so why not? Let's roll. Belly shot, not the belly shot, mom. Uh, I know. When you it, get flinging the you thing, don't like the belly shot. I don't like the rear end. I've shot. lost I get it. 48 pounds, but it's not enough. And yuck! Nobody likes the belly shot. You guys, you guys don't want to watch the belly shot. All right, just pound. no belly shot. Pound it, man. All right, we were very blessed in that the ground was not too hard, even though right here is a driveway. And if you can probably see it, there's rock, a lot of rock throughout the whole thing. But we got all the posts pounded. And uh, now Krista is figuring out the amount of fencing we need, which right now... We need 100, 150 foot, because we actually need 132 feet, but they don't come in those um, dimensions. So 150 feet... Um, of wire will be sufficient. Yep. So the idea too, slightly different. If you can see, this is going to be straight here. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be a fence there and a fence over to the corner. And the reason for that is that we can feed from the outside. Even in inclement weather, they're going to have shelter and water's not too far away. So we'll show you when everything is done, which the gate might not be today because we got to yeah. save up for that. Uh -uh. He just wants to do the video work. I know he does, but he doesn't have thumbs, so it's not possible. He doesn't need it. Uh, uh, uh. Nope, nope, nope. Ladies and gents, <laughs> I hope you have had a great time, but if you haven't, you get double your money back. It's double your money back day here. So whatever you had to pay to have a good time here. It's our no stink guarantee. Yeah, the no stink guarantee. I love it. Yeah. Um, so you can send your checks directly to me because it's my birthday coming up soon. So right. if you didn't have a good time, you got to send me a check. Right. I don't think it works out. I way. don't think it works that way. Don't do no. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought he was going to bite me. <laughs> he's, he's just in a mood. He's, he's in a playful he's mood. He's in a playful mood. He's very curious. He's always, he, Whiskey is uh, our daughter's horse. And he's very curious about um, everything. Um, he, Apparently he's, he's curious about my pants right now. Yeah. He's, yeah. Anyway, uh, we do really, really appreciate it when you like, when yep. you share the videos. And subscribe. It and, does help. Yep. And watch the whole video. That really helps just too. Just put it on auto repeat. Yeah, just, just mute it and then just let it play. Yeah, yeah that's a good thing. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, leave a comment because it does help. Yep. And if you like this kind of content, then let us know. Yeah. So I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing and, and blessed day. day. Oh, now this is fun. Check this out. I had no idea. We had some chipaholics. <laughs> they just love these old, nasty, stale, salty chips. Just love it. Oh my gracious, Dottie, you are looking great. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> nicely done, ladies. Slow down, you're gonna get yourself a tummy ache. You know what? I'll go get you some guacamole. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs>
Chips Ew. okay, guac not so much. They could probably have guac, but I don't I think, don't think like so. <laughs> but look at that. They just want that salt, probably. All right, enough corn for you.